Hey guys, it's Ann over at Plan Obsessed, and today we are going to do the second harvest on the Vermi Bag Low Mammoth with the African Nightcrawlers. I'm hoping to see a better harvest at this time. So, looks like it's falling right out the bottom. It's pretty dry. Most of the time I have to go in there after it. Surprised that a bunch fell out right on its own. Seems like a good moisture for harvesting. Although this is still not 100% um, composted. It's definitely better than what I saw last time, for sure. And I am getting some worms. And I'm trying to go up to the zipper part here. All right. I'm going to zip this side of the bag back up again. And then I will move you over to the other side. Should have done the okay. That, dang it. All right. So then, same thing. The side's falling out on its own a little. It's like a middle bar here in the middle that I'm trying to get my hands underneath of. is way better than the urban worm bag. Not upside down in a knot. I'm trying to harvest worm castings. I did make it a little bit taller than I think the original specs were just because I really didn't want to have to be upside down for this procedure. Um, which makes it right at the limit of what I can um, feed. So that is a little different. Um, nope, not yet. Warm up. I don't know. See. Yeah, mostly. I have to probably go around behind and hit it too. But let's see what we've got. Um, I'm going to move the tripod back so I can get this out. Alright. So this is what we have. Better than last time. It's going to require some sifting. A lot of bigger chunks still in there. Not very many worms. There are some, but not very many. So I'm going to call this a success. And uh, let's go look in on the top of it now and um, see how much we need to uh, backfill to feed these guys. I'm going to do a quick harvest. Uh, sifting a little bit here and then I can put the stuff that is the overs back in the bin and I can actually get a harvest from these guys. See what kind of stuff is settled to the bottom. Mulch, clumps of paper, I can also pick out any plastic that's in here as well that's come through with the shredder. 
for the windows. Nowadays, we try to remember to take the windows out before we shred the junk mail, but we didn't always. So there's still some remnants in here from back in the day. And now for the feeding and the reset. All right, so here we are. Looks like we've taken it down quite a bit. Kind of root around here and see if we have any food left from last week or the week before, whenever it was that I fed these guys. Did not review the video. So let's see, we've got corn. <laughs> oh, I love that. Let's see, what else is there? I first got these guys about two years ago, and is it three now? Mm -hmm. They uh, they were big African night crawlers, like you see on some people's websites. Um, and then over the years, I had kept them in smaller systems, and successive generations just kept getting smaller and smaller. So um, you know, I had kind of hoped that they would stay the big huge worms, but in a, I had them in totes originally, until I realized how many of them I was losing to their adventures. Um, they, to give you an idea, I mean, I probably have lost more than half of the ones that I originally bought from Emily, the crazy worm lady. Um, first time I lost some, it was because the uh, the basement was too cold for them. Um, I think I overestimated how warm my basement was. And then the second time I lost them, not really in numbers, but in volume because they um, really, they're kind of like, you know, they adapt their size to what kind of uh, environment they have. and. Hopefully in this bin they will have room to stretch out and, and be able to become big worms again. So I am trying to feed them up a little heavier so they can grow if they want to or if they're able. I don't know if the, the problem starts with them when they're just hatched or if it happens while they're adults. I suspect it's, you know, when they hatch and they grow to the environment that they live in. Um, so, so it took out quite a bit uh, out of the bottom for the harvest, so I'm going to add some bedding before I add the food, and then I'll add more bedding on top. All 
All right, today we have beet trimmings and some oatmeal. Kind of spread that out a little bit more because it's frozen, so it'll have a lot of moisture to contribute. Then I'm going to add what I sifted out of the castings. I think that's probably two and a half, three gallons worth. Um, never avocado, avocado tree. Easy for me to say. All right, and then I'm going to give them some more bedding to top it off. Okay, but uh, I keep them in this bag system um, so they don't run away. If they're in a, in a tote system, they do tend to run off and explore and become what I call worm jerky. Um, they are very curious or, or whatever. I don't think it's a matter of them not being happy in their environment. I think it's just the way they are. It's not like the other worms. If there's a storm or a change in atmospheric pressure, sometimes you'll see them kind of start roaming. But the African nightcrawlers do it all the time. doesn't matter summer, winter, rain, drought, doesn't matter. They run amok. So I have the best luck keeping all of the worms together in the system. Um, so that's what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, we've had a bit of a harvest. I would say about 50% of this second harvest is able to be used as finished castings and the other 50% went in here. The, the first harvest, 100% went back in here, um, so maybe the next harvest um, will be 75%, you know, pure castings. We'll find out, won't we? All right, guys, well, if you like the video, give me a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button, and if you want to know what I'm doing, what I'm doing, it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.